On episode 452 of Nintendo Switchcraft, new shirt plus Metroid Prime news and is the next firmware update for the Switch something more than stability? Those stories and more on this episode of Nintendo Switchcraft. Hey, this is Bobby Blackwell from the Voice of Geeks Network at vognetwork.com and you're listening to Nintendo Switchcraft. Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Switchcraft. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I bring you all of the Nintendo news that you need. So if you didn't know, you can join us live over on twitch.tv slash run, jump, stomp, or you can listen to it in whatever podcast app that you uh, like to use. It's free. It doesn't cost you a thing. Or you can watch it over on YouTube as well. There's a lot of options for ways that you can consume this particular show. Uh, speaking of this particular show, this particular episode of Nintendo Switchcraft is brought to you by Travis M. You can get Switchcraft and all my other content ad-free for as little as a dollar by joining the Patreon over at patreon.com slash run, jump, stomp. Uh, so without any further ado, let's jump right in. We've got some stuff to talk about. And the first thing that I want to talk about is this new shirt, this shirt that I just designed I actually, I, I, I did this as a doodle, this, this shirt, and you're not going to be able to see it if you're listening to the audio show. So uh, make sure that you go to the show notes over at runjumpstomp.com. This is episode 452. Uh, but I, I was just doodling this on my iPad, and I don't know why it took me so long to decide to turn it into a shirt. Uh, it was mostly, I wasn't really happy with it at first. It, it's it's uh, a big blue N, a big blue, uh, red S, and a little yellow C for Nintendo Switchcraft. And every time I looked at the N, I was thinking, hmm, or, or yeah, I was thinking this kind of looks like a Z. But then I finally had the epiphany of just rotating it just a little tiny bit, just a little tiny bit, and then it, it made perfect sense to me. So uh, if you want to check out this shirt, and directly support the show and uh, tell everybody about your your favorite Nintendo podcast, then it's super easy to do. Go to runjumpstomp.com slash thank you, and you'll find a link that takes you to the right place. And uh, I'm really happy with this shirt, so I just wanted to let people know about it. But that's not really what we're here to talk about. We're not here to talk about uh, ways that you can support the show, of which there are many over at runjumpstomp.com slash thank you. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is Metroid Prime. Metroid Prime is outsourcing some stuff. Now, you might be wondering, what is up with that? Well, uh, this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, Metroid Metroid Prime is one of those games that is has a really interesting history. The first part of it starts out with Nintendo announcing that they were going... Uh, that they were taking a side-scrolling uh, game like Metroid and turning it into a first-person shooter. And people were very, very unhappy with this decision until they played it. Once they played it, people were like, oh my god, Nintendo, you somehow managed to pull this off. And they absolutely did. Metroid Prime 1 was... One of the best games that I've ever played. Uh, back on the GameCube, that game came out. It just it blew everybody away. It was so good. And then Metroid Prime Two came out, and Metroid Prime Three came out, and the, like uh, those are all fantastic games. Um, Metroid Prime Three, I'm not as much a fan of as the first two because that's the first one that required you to use the Wii remote in order to play. And I didn't like playing like that. I very much preferred playing on the GameCube controller. Uh, obviously, we're not going to have to worry about that with Metroid Prime 4. Now, if you have not been following Nintendo news all along, you might be wondering, okay, what is going on with Metroid Prime 4? Well, uh, back at E3 2016, no, 2017, E3 2017, the Nintendo Switch had just come out. All right, it came out in March 3rd, uh, and then E3 is in June. So three months later, or actually probably three and a half months later, uh, E3, 
Nintendo's doing their announcement, and then they announce uh, Metroid. What in the heck is the name of the game? Metroid Samus Returns, which is basically a remake of Metroid Samus Returns. That was a, a Game Boy game, and it was remade for the 3DS. Now, Nintendo had no choice at that point but to also announce that they were working on Metroid Prime 4. And here's the reason why they didn't have any choice in the matter. If they didn't announce that they were working on Metroid Prime 4, then a lot of everybody, the only thing that anybody would talk about is, hey, you just, you just put out a brand new console. And instead of bringing Metroid to that console, you're bringing it to the 3DS and ignoring the new console, what is wrong with you? So Nintendo, by bringing out this 3DS Metroid game, they didn't have any choice but to also announce that they were uh, working on Metroid Prime 4. And of course, when this uh, logo, and that's all we got, that's all we have so far, and this was back in 2017. Uh, but when this logo uh, popped up on the screen, uh, it, it was a brilliant marketing move, of course. Uh, it, it shows up, and of course, the internet just loses its collective mind. They can't, like, everybody's uh, very excited for this idea that the Metroid Prime series is going to continue, uh, myself included. I can't wait to play Metroid Prime 4. Now, let's fast forward a little bit. We hadn't heard anything about Metroid in quite a long time. And then I can't remember exactly when, and maybe chat will let me know. And if they do, I will let you know. But I can't remember exactly when, but they 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 put out a video of uh, one of the developers whose name escapes me standing in like this white room. And he says, uh, I regret to inform you that the, I'm paraphrasing here, but he says, basically, I regret to inform you that we are going to have to delay Metroid Prime for it wasn't up to our standards, and so we are returning back to the uh, the drawing board, throwing everything in the trash, and starting over from scratch. And Darren Pogue in chat is saying that that happened in late 2018, I think. And I believe I I I, I agree that feels about right, even though I don't know the date off the top of my head. Uh, so they were like, uh, we're delaying Metroid Prime for. Uh, we're, we're sorry. We just, we don't want to ship a bad game. We want to ship a good game. And what we have right now is not up to our standards. So we're going to junk it and start over. And that's when they went to retro studios, which is the, the company that actually made Metroid prime one, two, and three. So it, it was like, yes, it, it you know, the chickens are coming home to roost. N Nintendo is, is taking Metroid and they're saying retro work your magic again. And so Retro is taking, uh, takes over, uh, and Vaxer and Chad is telling us it's January 25th, 20, 2019. So we, Darren and I were pretty close. Thank you very much, Vaxer. Uh, so Nintendo gives Metroid back to uh, Retro Studios, and we've heard nothing since, nothing at all. Well, uh, this came to us via Nintendo Life. I have a channel in our Discord where people can post uh, interesting articles that they want me to talk about on the show. And this one is from Nintendo life. It says at the start of late, uh, I'm sorry, at the start of 2019, Nintendo fans got quite the shock when Nintendo restarted the development of Metroid prime four. I guess if I had read this, uh, the beginning part, instead of just the quote, I would have known a little bit more about it, but that's okay. Um, this YouTuber named Dr. 81 and it's spelled weird, but that's okay. Um, it might, it, this indicates that we're getting, a that, that Retro Studios is not relying on just themselves to get this done. Uh, so this guy, it says here, he's been digging around online and believes he now found definitive, undisputed proof of the environmental work in the game being outsourced. Posted less than a day ago in a job listings for Retro Studios and a contract for an environment outsour outsourcing review artist. Basically, from what I understand, uh, Retro Studios hires this outsourced, um, you know, they, they, they hire somebody else to do this environmental work, and then it get, comes in, and this person whose job, it, their one job, is to look at this stuff and make sure that it's uh, up, to, up to snuff, I guess. 
Uh, so basically, uh, review uh, like the 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 job description says review outsource content to ensure final deliverables reflect the desired artistic vision. Now, there's there's I'm sure that there's more to it than that, and you can watch the the um, the YouTube video if you want to check out the show notes. But what does this mean? Well, it means that Retro Studios is not the only ones working on this. They are getting help from outside sources in order to speed up development. This could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. Uh, I I have a lot of confidence in Retro Studios that they can get this right. Even if they're outsourcing some of the environments that, that are being made for the game, uh, I'm sure that if the stuff comes in and it's not up to snuff, they're going to say this isn't good enough. And even if they said, okay, this, you know what, this is good enough. Nintendo has already proven that they can be trusted to say, this isn't good enough, scrap it and start over. If this uh, outsource stuff comes in and it's not up to par with everything else, and Retro Studio says this is fine, Nintendo, I'm sure, will say, that's not fine. You got to fix this. So, uh, look. Here's one thing that we can think that we might be able to say. The more people that you get working on this, the faster it's probably going to get made, right? I mean, that's the general wisdom. That's what the general wisdom says. So I think that this tells us that uh, the, the game will be coming out faster due to this kind of thing. Does that mean it's going to be coming out soon? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think that we're going to be seeing Metroid Prime 4 in 2020. I really don't. I think maybe more 2021, uh, especially if they are just now outsourcing for the environmental work. I think that that says a lot about where they are in the development pipeline of this game. That being said, I am not a software developer. De developer. I'm just some nerd that likes to talk about video games. So what do I know about this? Absolutely nothing. Uh, that being said, that's what my gut tells me. All right, let's move on. Um, <clears throat> actually, what we're going to do, we'll, we'll hear from a sponsor for the audio show. And then when we come back, uh, we're going to talk about a possible firmware update coming to the Nintendo Switch. Stick around. Now I know how you're spending the holidays that's watching right. Nintendo. All right, we are back, and um, this is a Twitter post from somebody who calls themselves Vindal Master of Hype, and uh, they said, apparently, this is the first time the Switch is getting maintenance for a console firmware update. Uh, so, And then they, they have a, a screenshot here that shows that uh, basically the online stuff for going online and playing games together, uh, the online stuff for the, that's all going to be down, and apparently this coincides with an upcoming firmware update for the Nintendo Switch. Now, I, everybody's made this joke a million times. What do you get with a firmware update for the Switch? You get stability. Uh, I, I even drew a comic at one point, which I don't know where it is. Maybe I'll find it and post it in the show notes eventually, but. Uh, I drew a comic of uh, back when it was 5.0. You know, we were updating to the point uh, the the 5.0 software, and uh, it was just stability again. So somebody threw it out the the window. Uh, everybody always says stability, stability. That's what you get. Well, uh, from approximately Tuesday, January seventh, twenty twenty, at four thirty. Um, I'm guessing that's four thirty a.m. Or they would have used. Um, like military time for the PM uh, to Tuesday, 7 January 2020, 530. All right. So for an hour and a half, all of the online stuff is going to be down during this. Um, all the network services will be down. And at that time, we're anticipating that a firmware update will come. And maybe that firmware update will have some new features. Now, what could those new features be? I don't know. I don't think anybody knows, but it's fun to speculate. So we have some time, seven days, essentially, we have some time before um, 
the firmware update comes and uh, the network services being unavailable comes. So here's my question to you guys. What do you think we're going to get with this new version, uh, Switch V10? All right, so this is the 10.0 uh, firmware update. What do you think that we will get with that? And keep in mind that they, this is the first time that they're doing maintenance for like network services down for a firmware update. Very interesting stuff. This also makes me wonder if we're going to get sometime this week, uh, well, not this week, but in the first week of January, uh, sometime in that first week of January, I wonder if we'll end up with getting a Nintendo Direct to tell us about these new updates. It's always something that is fun to speculate about. Um, <laughs> Jester Scott in chat says uh, folders, hopefully. While that would be cool to get folders, and don't get me wrong, I would love to get folders for my Nintendo Switch home screen. Uh, I don't think that that necessitates uh, bringing the network down. So I think it has something to do with online. I could be wrong, but uh, it's possible. Uh, Darren Pogue says it would be nice if Joy-Con syncing slash postponing was better uh, rather than holding the L and R button. Oh, positioning. <laughs> <laughs> Autocorrect. Uh, Joy-Con syncing and positioning was better rather than holding the L and R buttons. Um, Darren Pogue says maybe friends lists. So listen, if you're watching this over on YouTube, leave a comment in the comment section down below to let us know what do you think is coming with the next firmware update uh, that we think is coming out next week. And, um, you know, after that, if you're if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can get a hold of me uh, on Twitter at Run Jump Stomp. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, Nintendo spending a lot of money on TV this year. Well, well, to me, it sounds like a lot of money, but if you compare it to everybody else, it's really not. Nintendo spent about fifty million on TV ads this year. Fifty million. Now that might sound like a lot, but if you compare that to Xbox, to PlayStation, uh, they spent less than half of both PlayStation and Xbox, um, which is pretty, like, it's, it's pretty frugal of them. Like, Nintendo is not spending uh, nearly as much as everybody else is, but they are making really big advances uh, into you know, the, get, getting their consoles sold. So why is it that they are not spending nearly as much as the others, but they are growing so much faster? And I know that there's a lot of people out there who get super excited about everything that good that happens to Nintendo. And, and don't get me wrong, I want good things for Nintendo because good things for Nintendo means that I get to play more Nintendo games. That's just the way it works. Um, so don't don't get me wrong, I but I, I hate to rain on everybody's parade, but the reason why Nintendo doesn't have to spend as much money is because it's new. It's new. So a lot of that advertising is going to be coming from word of mouth. People are not still talking about the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. They're just not. I mean, why would they? They've had like almost everybody who wants a PS4 or an Xbox One probably has one at this point. Almost everybody. So Nintendo doesn't have to spend as much in order to get people to notice their stuff because their stuff is new and people notice new stuff automatically. Uh, the thing that I found to be interesting is uh, this comes to us from uh, Venture Beat and they have like this little pie chart that shows where they're spending their money. Um, this is not necessarily just Nintendo, but a lot of different places. Um, so uh, Other is 66.6%. It's kind of an evil number. I'm not going to lie. Uh, then we've got, um, I don't know why they only use blues and greens for this. It makes it a little difficult to read this particular pie chart. Uh, but NFL football, uh, I think that that's 12.2% of the video game ads were on... NFL football, NBA basketball looks to be about 7.9%, sports center 6.1%, college football 4.4% and then <laughs> I love that this got its own category here. 
SpongeBob SquarePants. There's a lot of video game advertising on sports and SpongeBob. And I find that to be just, just hilarious. Sports and SpongeBob, that's where most of the video game advertising dollars are going right now. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> what do you guys think about that? Let me know. Uh, Nintendo of America tweeted this out. I found this to be interesting. They tweeted out, take a look at... T- Take a look back at some highlights from the past 10 years. Which of your favorite games and systems can you spot? And so they listed a bunch of stuff that Nintendo have has put out in the last 10 years. And uh, let me open this up bigger. Um, there's some pretty good stuff in here. Man, Nintendo had a really good 10 years. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, uh, an amazing game. Pokemon Sword and Shield. I can't really say if that's amazing or not because I haven't, I've hardly played it at all. Uh, Mario Kart Tour, uh, that's garbage in in my opinion. I I just hate that game. It's so very bad. ARMS, listen, uh, this is a game that came out in the um, first few months of the Nintendo Switch's life. And if you have not picked this up, it's a really, really fun fighting game. It's my second favorite fighting game. My first favorite fighting game being um, Smash Brothers. Uh, let's see. What else did we get? Oh gosh. Here we go. Super Mario maker. The first super Mario maker. That is a real game changer that came out on the Wii U. Thankfully we got the updated version on the, um, on the switch, uh, super Mario odyssey, in my opinion, the best 3d Mario game ever. Uh, it's so very, very good. Um, I can't believe that these are in the last 10 years, but Metroid, uh, or I'm sorry, Kid Icarus Uprising was less than 10 years ago. That is very surprising to me. I did not anticipate that, uh, happening, but, and then finally they're showing Pikmin three and Nintendo land. I thought, I feel like that those are longer ago than they are, but if you, if you check out the tweet from Nintendo of America, I'm curious, what are on this list, what are your favorite games on here? For me, it's Breath of the Wild, without a doubt, and Super Mario Odyssey. Those are my, those are my two favorite games on the Switch right now, I think. They're just amazing. And uh, Nintendo had a really good 10 years. Now, the thing that, that occurs to me is we've got next year coming, and I'm, I'm very excited to find out what is coming next year? We already know about Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing New Horizons, I think is what it's called, if I remember correctly. Uh, that game comes out in March. We really don't know much else about Nintendo's uh, next year. I believe that Breath of the Wild 2 is going to come out in holiday, and we're going to find out more about that at E3. Um, but I'm really hopeful that very soon we're going to be getting a new Nintendo Direct um and uh, that Nintendo Direct will tell us more about what's going on this year on Nintendo. All right, so that's it for this episode of Nintendo Switchcraft. Actually, no, it's not. I lied. I'm a liar. I just really quick, I wanted to tell you guys about some of the best deals on the eShop right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Cuphead is currently $14 on the eShop. That game is fantastic. It's a <clears throat> side-scrolling shooter. It's really good. It's really difficult, but it's also really fun. And I'm a big fan of it. And it's a two-player co-op game, which is really, really great. Um, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle is an uh, an amazing XCOM ripoff, basically, featuring Mario characters. But it's so much more than just an XCOM ripoff. And that's currently 75% off. You can pick that up for 15 bucks. Now, that, that game tends to be on sale quite often. If you want to get the gold edition, that's $20 right now, down from 80 And I'll pick one more game that's on sale right now that I want uh, that, that I think is uh, interesting. And here you go. Graveyard Keeper is this weird top-down... Uh, almost sandboxy game where you are this guy who has to make a graveyard and you've got all these people in town to do quests for and stuff like that. And it's only $7 right now, down 65% from $20. 
Uh, so I would recommend those games as interesting games that maybe you've got some eShop gift cards uh, with your um, with your Christmas, and now you know what you should buy. All right. All right, let's wrap up the show. Become a part of the community over at runjumpstomp.com slash discord. You can also watch the show live at twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp. I apologize for my voice. It's starting to starting to get really, really hoarse. Um, please check out uh, one of my other shows, 143 Pixels. It's a podcast where every episode I, I talk to one friend about one game and we have a conversation about it. Uh, the next episode comes out, the episodes come out on Tuesday and are on Tuesdays. Sorry. And the next episode, I believe last episode was, um, oh my God, Ultima online. And the next episode is going to be final fantasy 10 and 10 two, which actually, now that I think about it, that's on sale right now on the eShop for 50% off down to 24 99. Uh, so there you go. Uh, anything else that I want to talk about? This show is part of the Giant Size Team Up Network. If you want to know more about our other shows, make sure you head on over to gstu.net. And if you want to support the show, buy a shirt. Go to runjumpstomp.com slash thank you. Buy that cool shirt that I was telling you about. And uh, let's get out of here. The music you're hearing right now is Corneria Star Fox Remix by Noteblock. It's awesome. You're awesome. Have an awesome day. Stay awesome.